What is going on everybody, Shri Kanasa here and in this video, I'm going to be telling you exactly why your Google Ads campaigns suck. Now this is one of the most common problems a lot of e-commerce store owners face and that is they're just unable to find out why after spending so much money on Google Ads their campaigns are just not performing up to the level that they want. Now, a lot of people think that there are some crazy different maneuvers or tactics that you might have to do, but trust me on this when I say that there's actually a few quick strategies which you can implement right away in order to really turn around your campaign performance. But let's just jump right into it. Now, why exactly do your campaign suck? We're gonna be dividing this out into two types of different sucks. Number one suck is the stagnant stuck, where your campaigns are simply stagnant no matter how much you increase the budgets no matter how much you increase the bids or whatever else you might do your campaigns just don't perform at the level you want they're not increasing in profitability they're not increasing in revenue nothing is happening this is the stagnant suck number two suck is called the unprofitable suck now this is where your campaigns are actually losing you money and you're pretty much better off without them there are other different scenarios which you might be facing with google but for the sake of this video we're going to be assuming that you are within one of these two categories now the number one most common reason why your google ads campaigns actually suck is because of number one too high bids or number two too low bids now to illustrate this i have opened on my screen a client's account and this client is under my google ads marketing agency your marketing more on that later but as you can see we're looking at right now the last 14 days worth of data and there's a bunch of different campaigns running on this google ads account at least they were running previously before we came into this account but majority of the ad spend was gone to these top four campaigns so that is where we're going to be diverting our attention to what i want you to look at is this second campaign right over here this is a general testing campaign the same way i always teach on my youtube channel but let's take a look at the statistics so it has spent so far $177.23. By the way, this account is targeted towards the United Kingdom market, but the owner lives in the United States. So the amount is in dollars, but the target market is for the UK. $177 in ad spent for a total of zero sales. And we can see that the bid was around 28 cents that the campaign was getting. If we go inside the campaign, we'll be able to see within the settings section exactly what bid this campaign was running at. So it was running on maximized clicks the same exact way that I always recommend, but the bid in this case was only 30 cents. If we convert this to Great Britain pounds, this will be much lower in terms of pounds. Now going back to the main dashboard and looking at the first campaign, which is another campaign which we started running after realizing that this second campaign was not running at a lower bid, what we want to do is now look at the stats. The first stat, which is the cost, is $427.06 for a total of four sales. And this campaign has been running at around $100 a day budget. It has not been running for too long, less than a week so far. But still, we have managed to get four sales at a 2.23 ROAS. Now, is this ROAS amazing? Absolutely not, but it is still break even and slightly above break even for this store. We have gotten $952 in sales and it is much better than what this second campaign was at. Now let's take a look at the cost per link click. The cost per link click for this campaign is much higher than this second campaign, which we had running. It's at 35 cents per link click. If we go inside the campaign now to the settings section, we will be able to see that the maximum CPC bid limit here is actually 49 cents. So the bid limit is much, much higher, about 19 cents higher. And the weird thing is this campaign is the campaign getting the results and getting the sales, not this second campaign, which was running at a much lower bid. So exactly why is this happening? Google ads is a very tricky platform. There are bids that work for certain niches and there are bids that just don't work for certain niches. If you tried a 50 cent bid for a much more competitive niche like watches, this campaign would not be spending any money at all. However, within this niche, and this is a general dropshipping store, this bid just works. I've seen it happen time and time again. Ever since I began with my own e-commerce store, a bid of 45 cent to 50 cent has just worked regardless of the country that you target, regardless of the kinds of products that you sell, especially if it's just a general dropshipping store. And that is exactly what we see. So number one most common reason why so many ad accounts and so many people 
really fail to get success with their Shopify store with their Google Ads account is because they have too high of a bid or too low of a bid. Now, if this e-commerce store was running that campaign at a $1 bid, this campaign would have sales, that's for sure. However, it would be extremely unprofitable. It would be losing money. My client would have already fired me by now. So you want to make sure your bid is just right. Again, watch some of my other videos, which I'll leave the links in the description for, but have the right bid for your niche. And this is kind of like a little bit of a test that you will have to do. For some stores, a 50 cent bid is ideal. For other stores, it's just not gonna work. So again, don't have too high of a bid, don't have too low of a bid. You'll most likely know if your bid is ideal or not because if it's too low the campaign will not spend the budget fully if it's too high it will just rush through the budget within the first few hours of a new day and you will be most likely unprofitable so that's the number one most common reason why your google ads campaigns suck this brings me to the number two most common reason and that is you're just running the wrong campaign type. Now, what do I mean by this exactly? When I say wrong campaign type, I'm meaning if you are a brand new Shopify store, there is no reason why you should be running smart shopping campaigns. And if you're an established Shopify store with a lot of data, there is no reason why you should not be trying out smart shopping campaigns. So when I say campaign type, I'm referring to smart campaigns versus standard shopping campaigns or even versus search campaigns. And this gets kind of more on the technical side when you go inside and look at the individual bid strategies like maximize clicks, manual CPC, etc. Of course, you want to make sure those are ideal as well for the products that you sell. But normally, here is the rule of thumb I apply for my own e-commerce brands as well as for any new clients I take on. If it's a brand new Shopify store with little to no data, I'm always starting a standard shopping campaign aspect at maximize clicks. Around a 50 cent bid, of course, this is gonna depend on the niche. If it's an established store, maybe it has a lot of data from Facebook ads, TikTok ads, maybe it has a lot of data already from Google ads itself, then I'm most likely gonna be starting a smart campaign with no target ROAS check. Now, I'm gonna be making more videos on exactly how you should be starting your campaigns, but this is the general rule of thumb you wanna be following. For new accounts, go the standard campaign route. For established accounts with a lot of data, not just from Google, but also from other advertising platforms, go the smart route. This is exactly what I'm achieving the most success with, both for my stores as well as my client stores. But if your own Google Ads campaigns are sucking, make sure that you're running the right campaign type for the amount of data that you have gotten. But this directly leads me to point number three as to why your Google Ads campaigns suck, and that is you simply have the wrong kind of beta strategy. Now, always I recommend for new accounts, especially with a general testing campaign, to go the maximize bid limit route. If you try to run a general testing campaign with a manual CPC, there is a very high chance your campaign is going to be unprofitable and is not going to get you the desired results. Now, is there a chance that it will end up getting results? Of course there's a chance. But based on my experience running Google Ads for so many years now, Time and time again for multiple different niches, for multiple different ad accounts, I have seen maximize clicks is really the way to go, especially when you go with the standard shopping route. There's some different strategies that can work. Checking the target ROAS box can work in that case, but also not checking it can work. Both work perfectly fine. Now, personally for me, I just like to leave it unchecked nowadays for smart shopping, but make sure you have the right kind of bid strategy. If you're a brand new account, don't try to go the automated bidding strategy types like target CPA, target ROAS, et cetera, where you're giving Google too much control. And the reason is if you are a brand new ad account with not a lot of data, Google has no kind of data to fall back on to get you those desired results. So if you put a target CPA of $50, Google does not know what kind of data to look at to get those kinds of CPAs for you because it doesn't know what audience converts at those CPAs. So that is where manual CPC, maximize clicks really comes into play. But maximize clicks in that case performs the best if you want data fast and that too, good kind of data. But don't let this stop you from trying out different things. After all, you're only gonna figure out whether your account responds to smart shopping the best or standard shopping the best. It's all worth the test. But what I like to do is for brand new ad accounts, again, with the bid strategy, maximize clicks, standard shopping for more established, then I'll go from testing between standard shopping, maximize clicks, 
as well as smart shopping without the target ROAS box check. But of course, at the end of the day, this is worth a try. And to illustrate this further, I'm going to open my screen right over here within an ad account. You won't be able to see the names here because this is again another client account which I'm running ads for. The first campaign right over here is actually a standard shopping campaign. We're looking at the last 14 days worth of data. Let's go ahead and change that to last 30 days worth of data. So right over here, the second campaign in this case is the standard shopping campaign. The first campaign is a smart shopping campaign. These two campaigns are targeting two completely different countries. The first one right here is targeting the United States only. The second one right here is targeting Canada only. But the reason why we decided to try smart shopping for the US is because this ad account had a lot of established sales data, over six figures worth of data previously before we came. So it was pretty straightforward to try smart shopping in this case for the United States. However, here's the big thing. With the smart shopping for the different country like Canada, for example, it completely wrecked. It did not do well. This client lost money on that campaign type. And the reason is there was not enough data within Canada for this account to do well. So that is why we ended up doing a standard shopping campaign. And this is exactly what I mean when I said test out different ad strategies. Now, the first campaign type was a wrong bid strategy for Canada, but we would not have found that out if we had not tested the bid strategy as a whole. So you definitely want to be giving it a try. And as you can see right over here, smart shopping is performing much better for the United States because majority of the customers for this brand come from the US. And we have a 3.15 ROAS for this brand right over here. For Canada right over here, we can see a 3.02 ROAS, but this is with standard shopping. And of course, there's a big difference in sales because smart shopping is more Google ads oriented. Google is controlling the bidding and a lot of different stuff. So Google is trying its best to basically optimize for the bid strategy here. We're doing maximize conversions, not maximize conversion value. Hence why this has a lot of extra conversions. And this one, of course, maximize clicks. We're running it at a set bid limit for that works for this campaign. And we're getting decent amount of results from that. But again, be sure to always test out different bidding strategies to really find out exactly what is going to be working the best for you. But while you are testing different things out, while it is extremely important to get these tests done, it is also important to abide by the rule of not testing too much too quickly. And this brings me to point number four as to why your Google ads campaigns suck. You are basically making a lot of changes way too fast. It is messing with the Google ads optimization. It is messing with the algorithm and Google is having trouble really staying on track, trying to get you the right kind of audience because Every time you make a change, every time Google ads starts to take its first initial steps towards right direction, you come in and you mess something up. You change something. Maybe you change the budget. Maybe you exclude a keyword. That is not the ideal way to go in 2022 and onwards if you want the right kind of results. So instead, you want to kind of ease out on the amounts of changes that you're making within the campaigns. Because in my experience so far in 2022 running these campaigns, what I have found out is that making too many changes too quickly is the best way to completely wreck a campaign's performance. And all of these changes that I'm referring to include product optimization. So excluding a product, excluding a keyword, making a change within the devices section or whatever change affects the performance directly affects the campaign you want to give it a bit of time just let it run after you make a single change don't change anything for the next four to five days i would even recommend seven days regardless of the budget that you're running at maybe if you're running at a thousand dollars a day budget make changes every four days or so but besides that you should be really waiting seven days because in 2022 the less changes you make the better it is going to be i mean look at all of the changes google ads is making towards giving google more control over over the bidding strategies like smart bidding and the things it has done with that performance max campaign. So clearly Google wants to take a lot of control away from you. You want to let Google do this because the more you let Google control your campaigns, the better performance you are going to have in the long run. So simply ease out on making too many changes, focus on the other things that matter and just let the campaigns perform as they need to perform because they will optimize on their own. They're smart enough to do this. And this brings me to the final point. This is more related to the search ads directly, but this can also relate to the standard shopping campaigns. Do not make too big of those negative keyword lists and do not add too many negative keywords at a time. This is one of the biggest lessons 
of 2022 I've taken so far with my clients accounts as well as my own ad accounts. Every time I've tried to add those negative keywords, whether it is a few negative keywords to maybe even a few hundred at a single time, it has always wrecked the campaign's performance, basically gone from spending the entire budget getting 100, 200, 500 impressions a day to getting 100 impressions, 50 impressions to around a zero impression. And this is simply happening more and more often, especially for search ads, but also for those standard shopping campaigns. So what do you do in this case? You simply want to stop adding too many of those big negative keyword lists. And if you see a lot of keywords that you're ranking for, that your campaigns are showing up for, which you don't want to be basically spending money on, just wait until the seven day period after you have made that specific change and add those keywords in the broad match match types. So what I mean by this is if you are ranking for the keyword 3D printer JCPenney, instead of adding the entire keyword 3D printer JCPenney as a negative keyword, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and create a negative keywords list. You want to put the word JCPenney in quotation mark to put it as phrase match. So now anytime something like 3D printer JCPenney or any word that comes with JCPenney is shown for your ads, you simply don't spend money on it because it is now part of the negative keywords list. This is the best way to go when you add those negative keywords and it is going to prevent Google from just tanking your results from getting good results, spending a good amount of budget every single day to basically not spending anything at all. This is, has been my personal experience so far in 2022 with the Google ads, but that is pretty much my five list of exactly why your Google ads campaigns are sucking in 2022 and onwards. Now I have been referring to my Google ads agency often within this video. So the Google ads marketing agency is something where I directly handle Google ads accounts for four clients. So if you are doing over $30,000 in sales with your e-commerce brand and you want to take it to the next level with Google ads, go on to my website at yorumarketing.com, book a call with my team and let's see if we can work together to scale your brand even more. But if you found any type of value in this video and you have stayed until the end, make sure to destroy that subscribe button, make sure to destroy the like button down below and I'll see you guys next time.